Hello and welcome to this video on how to set up a quiz and create a quiz in Moodle. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to turn editing on. Again, this was recorded fall of 2021, so it's got the updated look. And then I'm going to go to whichever week I want to add the quiz. So let's say I want to add it for this first week. So I'm going to add an activity or resource. Now these are the ones that I've kind of starred, but if you want to look at all the different options you can choose from, if you go to all, then you would just look and try to find quiz. There's quiz right there. Okay, so add a quiz. Okay, and then we're going to give this a name. We'll just call this test quiz. Um, if you want to have a description uh, that helps the students understand what it's about, this is a test quiz. Um, if you want to have this information be posted on Moodle, then you make sure you click that little box or it won't show this what's in here. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to do is the timing. So you can choose um, when the quiz opens and when the quiz closes. So all you do is, you know, let's say you want to have it open on the 18th of August and you want to have it open like first thing in the morning or maybe have it open after class. I don't know. Kind of depends on what you want to do. Maybe you don't want them to have to take the quiz until you've actually taught them the stuff. So since this class runs from uh, 10 to 10.50, so let's say I'm going to open this class at, uh, open this quiz at 11. So people can't actually start taking the quiz until after I've taught them the information. That's just a concept. And then if you want to have a closed date, which again, I would strongly suggest, let's say you're going to give them a week whatever, whatever your personal preference is, um, as far as whatever. Now keep in mind this uses military time, so if you want to have them until, you know, 11.55, 59 rather p.m., that's fine. So um, that's how the, the timing works. Okay, as far as the time limit goes, I would strongly encourage you not to set a time limit, simply because we have some students that have um, ADA requirements or uh, accommodations, where they are allowed extra time on quizzes and stuff like that. And, um, you know, again, it kind of depends on your course, depends on your whatever, but I personally don't have a time limit. It's not like, um, you know, it's, there's arguments for and against it, but that's where you would add a time limit if you wanted to. I, I personally don't. Okay, uh, under grades, now again, if you have not set up your grade book yet, you should because what's going to happen is you're going to figure out where does this grade go? Well, in, in, in this case, since I've set up my different um, categories, it's going to go under quizzes and assignments. Okay, um, You can choose what grade to pass. That's up to you. Um, attempts allowed. So if you want to have them do more than one attempt, let's say you want to give them a couple attempts, and then what, you know, what's where they get the average of the, the two or the first attempt, or the last attempt, the highest grade, it's up to you. So that's how you can choose whatever. A lot of the quizzes that I give in my English cl classes, um, I give them two attempts because I'm not really quizzing them on, you know, if they can just regurgitate information, but I have the quiz be more of a reinforcement of concepts that I'm teaching that they're going to be able to demonstrate in their writing assignments. So I usually do two attempts with the highest grade because if they get something wrong, then they can go back and see what they got wrong and figure out the correct answer and that helps reinforce them. That's just a kind of a general whatever. Under layout, you can say, okay, um, whenever they pull up the quiz, however many questions you want to show at the same time, that's up to you. Okay, under the question behavior, one thing I would recommend you do is where it says shuffle within the questions, I would say yes, because what happens is then as the questions are presented, um, every time the quiz pulls up, it shuffles the answers um, in side of the actual uh, quiz. So that way it's like if someone, so this is, prevents a lot of cheating. So if you have, you know, if you have one be B and two be C and three be D and one be, you know, whatever. Okay, every time the, the quiz is generated, A, B, C, and D are all, they're, they're randomized. So, I mean, if you take the quiz once and you go to take the quiz again, the answers are gonna be in a different order. So you actually have to read the question and read the answers. So that's very helpful. Um, there's some other, um, things that you can do, uh, which I'm not going to get into because it's a little more advanced. We're just kind of showing you how to set up a basic quiz. Okay, so let's go with that. Now, I'm going to save and return to course, and there is my test. Yay! Okay, but where's the questions? I got to add questions to the test, don't I? Yes, yes you do. Okay, now to add questions to the test, it's a little, for me this is counterintuitive because I want to feel like I want to hit edit, but no. It's actually, we actually click on the test itself. Okay. 
and you'll see that there's no questions that have been added. Well, I got to add a question, so I'm going to go to this gearbox, boop, and I am going to edit the quiz. Ha ha! Now, this shows how much the quiz is worth. Again, since I use a weighted graded system, all my quizzes are worth 100, which means that, let's say I'm going to have 10 questions, so each question would be 10 points each, or if you're going to do that, so some questions are worth more, I'll show you again how that works. Um, one thing, I, again, I would do is click Shuffle, because what that's going to do is, say if I have 10 questions, when someone takes the quiz, um, the questions are always randomized. Now, if you're doing questions that build on each other, that doesn't really work. But if it's just general overall thing, that way you take the quiz and the first question is, you know, something on plagiarism. And then you go take the quiz again, the first question may be more on point of view or something like that. So that's very helpful to kind of just randomize whenever they take it. So students can't say, hey, I took the quiz. Here's the, here's the list of the questions and here's the list of the answers. That's kind of a thing. Okay, so now I need to add a question. So if you've created questions from previous courses, you can add them from a question bank where you can actually just pull them up and just drop them in. Um, I don't know why you do a random question. I kind of want to be a little more in control of that, but let's show you how to start a new question. So we're going to create a new question. And there's all sorts of different types of questions you can ask. Some of these are more math kind of things, drag and drop into text, whatever. Um, little essay stuff. I'm going to show you the most common one, uh, which is the multiple choice. True false is also pretty common, but let's just look at multiple choice just to kind of get so you can kind of get a sense of how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add. Okay, and then I'm going to give it a question name, and this one's going to be about plagiarism. Okay, so that's the question name. Again, don't put the answer up there, um, you know. <laughs> so, and then here's the actual question. Okay. Um, when is it okay to plagiarize? I can never spell that. Hey, look at that. Wow. Magic. All right. Now, it says default points. So, again, if I'm going to have a quiz be worth 100 points, and I know that I'm going to create 10 quizzes, I mean 10 questions, then I would set that to be 10, because 10 times 10, or whatever. You can always go back and change this number later if you need to, okay? If you want to have some general feedback, you can do that. That's up to you. Um, again, um, for multiple choice, sometimes you can have some questions that are partially correct, whatever. Again, I'm going just simple. Let's say this is there's only one correct answer, okay? So one answer, but you can kind of play with those. Okay, so then here are your answers. Now this is, I'll be, I'll be honest, this is, I'm not a big fan of this because this is so small, so I actually make it bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start putting in some answers. Um, it is never okay to play dries. And then, since this is the correct answer, I want to say that's worth 100%, okay? That's 100% of the, that's 100% correct. So sometimes if you want to get a little more correct, I mean, it's like, well, you kind of got that partially correct if you do whatever, that's up to you. But if, again, we're just having one correct answer, mark that as 100%. Okay, so let's create a few more uh, questions here. Um, let's see. Um, when is it okay to plagiarize? When you have enough money to pay someone to do your work. Okay, so obviously that is not, so you don't have to change that to, to zero. Oh, you, oh, look at that, you can go negative. Ooh, you can really, you can really, whatever. I just leave that as none because that's, that's just not a correct answer. Okay, so what's another incorrect answer or when it's okay to plagiarize? Oh, I got it. Um, when you are tired and just want to get the assignment done. Okay. Uh, yeah, obviously that's not correct. And then one more. Um, let's see. Um, if you aren't cheating, you aren't trying hard enough. Okay. Obviously that is an incorrect answer as well. Okay. So now I've created my quiz. I can add more questions if I wanted to. You don't have to have four. It's just however many you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save changes. Okay, so now I have one question in my quiz, and you can see there's 10 points, and the total amount of points for the quiz is 10 points right there. But eventually I need to get to 100. So let's say I end up 
only coming up with five questions. Well, I can always go in and change this and say, hey, you know, actually, I want this to be 20 points instead. And then I hit enter, and it will change it to 20 points. It's kind of, you, you, so you can change, always change that. If you want to see what the quiz looks like or the question looks like, you can always just click on the preview of the question. Okay. Um, and you'll notice how it, sh it shuffled the, these are not the way, this is not the same order that I created these quiz, uh, the answers. So I shuffled those answers inside of it based on what I showed you earlier. So that's pretty cool, I think. Okay. And then also if you ever want to edit the quiz because there's something different, you made a mistake or you want to update it, you can just click on the gear and it brings you back to that point. Okay, so there's one other thing I want to show you that's important um, when it comes to quizzes and kind of grading overall. So let's say we're done with this quiz. Okay, um, so I'm going to go back to this week. Okay, so when they take the quiz, then that's all set up. Now, let's say they're doing a pretest and you want to be able to collect the data of what they earned on the pretest, but you don't want to have it count towards their grade. Well, in that case, we would go to edit settings. And under grade, instead of giving it a grade category, we would go uncategorized, okay? Um, and then we're going to save and return course. Then when I go to my grade book, oops, let's go to grade book, grade book setup. Um, you'll notice that the test down here is not categorized. It's not put into any one of these particular categories, okay? And you'll see that it's, it's the, the weight is at one, no. So if we want to give them an assignment that doesn't count towards their grade, we make it uncategorized and we change that to zero, okay? Um, because then that way we can still collect the information, but it doesn't count towards their grade. Um, another thing you can do while you're on this is, let's say you accidentally forgot to put it in the category. If you click on this little button right here, you can move it to whatever uh, category you want it to be. So like, oh, this is, goes under quizzes and assignments. So I'm going to put it there in that little box. So now you'll see that it's quizzes and assignments and it's under test. And now you'll see that it doesn't give you the option to give it a weighting because it's just going to say it's worth 100 points and that falls under that 20% of that grade. So that is how you set up quizzes and kind of use them in the gradebook for Moodle. And that's it.